I'm going to tell you a quick story about my journey in science visualization. It started when I was doing my master's thesis at the University of Alaska. And I was explaining to my advisor up there, Pete McCroy, that, uh, that, that trying to explain things about my, my thesis, they said, well, and I would sketch it on with pencil on paper, and I sketched a little diagram like this uh, altitude diagram of the ratio of chlorophyll A and B and how it changed with altitude. And he said, well, just put that in your thesis, actually. And so I did these little black and white drawings in my master's. And so then when I went to the University of Chicago to do my PhD, same thing. I started drawing these things, and uh, Randy Alberti, my advisor, said, put it down, and including a thesis. And then I actually published these these graphs uh, and, and um, not a graph in this case, so this, this diagram and, and map with little black and white rapidograph pins that you go kind of dot, 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 dot to make all that stippling. It took hours. Uh, it was kind of therapeutic, however. Uh, and uh, when I went to do a postdoc at Stony Brook uh, University on Long Island, uh, we were confronted with this novel uh, algal bloom brown tide. So I drew this little conceptual diagram that, that, was, uh, that summarized our uh, understanding of the causal agents for these, these brown tides. So I found that uh, very useful as a way of communicating in scientific literature, my thesis and the associated manuscripts and, and published papers that came out of my thesis and my postdoc. Then when I got a job at the University of Queensland in uh, Brisbane, Australia, I had a group we called the Marine Botany Group. And this kind of fuzzy photo you see here is... Uh, uh, is the graduate student bullpen. On the left is Carrie Solomon. I don't know if any of you have uh, run into her. She's now a professor at Gallaudet. Uh, she spent a year in Australia um, after she had undergrad. Anyway, uh, what you see is that refrigerator on the right, an old funky old fridge. And I had a, a secretary who, or assistant, personal assistant, who on her lunch breaks would go and uh, doing she was actually in art school, enrolled in art school, and she would draw these sea grasses and mangroves and corals, and it was really pretty. I mean, everybody would come and admire our fridge. We also then made a little logo for our group on the left, and when we started having our science be used in the Healthy Waterways campaign, we, we realized the power of using these color graphics, and at that point it was Corel Draw. And so I started, when I was giving talks to public audiences, using uh, these hand-drawn graphics. We were still publishing at the time in classic scientific literature. We wrote a book, uh, edited a book, sorry, a big fat book uh, that was um, with black and white uh, uh, graphics and, you know, for a scientific audience and, and it was, you know, on the bookshelves in the library. However, at the same time, we published a book. I'll get a copy of that. We published a, a book uh, called The Crew Member's Guide. And this is just a little hundred and something page book with full color graphics in contrast to the big thud you get when you when you throw this book on the table. This is 640 pages. Well, this we published, uh, I think, 750, printed 750 of these, and uh, it's still in print probably. These, uh, we, we had... Uh, like 3,000, and, and they were out of print, and they reprinted. So, so these really got 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 used. They got um, they really got the message out. And then we uh, started publishing our scientific uh, data in in these synthesis uh, volumes, which uh, all using color graphics uh, throughout. And uh, uh, we broadened our audience and said, "Well, go see it yourself." And then we did another synthesis. So we, we really got. I think pretty good at doing these 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 science communication uh, uh, products, uh, and then we realized that actually these are very effective not just for public audiences but actually for our peer science audience. So the peer uh, publications that we started inserting them in, and you know of course posters and powerpoints and, and websites. But but it's amazing how popular these are in. Uh, papers, uh, particularly now that uh, you know these online publishing with PDF, color PDFs, uh, it's it's really a great way to enhance your publication. So then, in 2002, came to uh, University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science to start up this integration application network, and you can see from our web page the, the the four words: communicate better, 
empower change. So it's our philosophy that by being better science communicators, we can create positive environmental change. So one of the tools that we uh, developed pretty early on in the, around 2005 uh, is the symbol and image library. So we gathered all these symbol, vector symbols that we were creating in uh, Adobe Illustrator and collected them into a library so we could share them with other people. We also um, had a bunch of images that we would collect and uh, share as well. And you can see that that really took off. We had uh, almost you know, 350,000 downloads of, of those uh, to, to date. Um, and what it, what it represents is what I call the art and the zen of science communication. The art of science communication is using diagrams to provide context and synthesis, using maps to provide geographic context and lots of information layers, photos to describe your methods and study sites and processes, and I'm going to add video to that, and we're, we're going to have a whole section on video later on, and then our scientific data in tables, graphs, figures. But there's also the Zen, and I hope that one of the things we get across in the semester is that it's not just the art and, and the science, but also the passion you put into it. Enthusiasm counts. Get excited about the stuff that you're, that you're passionate about and share that. Give science communication quality time so you can do a really good job, and then seek out uh, help. Get uh, revisions and feedback through colleagues and when you're dealing with public audience, go to your grandma, go to go to go to your uh, your neighbor, your friend, your your housemate. Good science communication can make you a better scientist, in in a variety of different ways. One, it if you're telling a story, and this is a diagram we did of an algal bloom in, in Australia. We we envisioned this uh, conceptually, and we realized we there are pieces we needed uh, that we're missing. So we went and got the iron chemist and the, and the soil chemist and the forestry people to help us connect uh, what we conceptualized here. So it can make you uh, a more, uh, get a more comprehensive research program came out of it. Combining visual elements can lead you to insights and, and you know, you can overlay different uh, graphics and, and start to see think patterns that you wouldn't see otherwise. And when you synthesize things and compare and contrast, you can get, uh, a, Insights. When we were doing a report card for the Great Barrier Reef, um, the first round we had uh, these six reporting regions, and we we added up our water quality, our seagrass, and our coral uh, indices that we had developed. And lo and behold, we had this huge gradient between Cape York, which was way up in the fairly pristine far north, and we we're not surprised. All of a sudden, we realized the Burdekin River. Wow, that's really bad. What's going on? And then we got out our uh, uh, are, are you know, dug into it and realized, oh yeah, it's got a huge uh, catchment with uh, lots of grazing and, and cattle grazing and, and erosion. And you look on the global map and realized, oh yeah, there's a big hole in the coral reef in the 1,500 uh, kilometer long Great Barrier Reef in the near the mouth of that river. It's like, duh. So you know, it was a real aha moment. So my final uh, statement to you is that this is an investment in client, in science visualization. This is something that is going to pay dividends for you over time. By building this library of great visuals, you can recycle them for different media. You can use them in papers. You can use them in PowerPoints. It helps convey information. It helps make a good impression on your audience. And it helps make a difference, which is kind of why we're doing this environmental science in the first place. I'll just add, it gets you a job. <laughs>